Transmitting high atop of Florida's Peninsula at 108 feet. This is Alpha Mike, and you are listening to episode 213, The Pagans MC, as we continue the Wise Guys series on Radar Cop Podcast. How do you get in contact with us? Well, it's easy. You got RadarCop.com. You can hear all our episodes from 1 to 213, or RadarCopNation.com, our official website. How can you hear the website of the podcast? Well, it's easy. Wherever you get your podcast, whether it's Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, etc. We're on there. Look us up, Radar Cop Podcast, and you will find us. What do we have in store in a new lineup? Well, we're going to Wednesdays, starting with this episode today, April 28th, and Sunday evenings. That's our new lineup every Wednesday and every Sunday evening. There'll be a new show that'll be broadcast to you, our fans. The 1% Club, why are we addressing this? Why are we looking at these things? Well, it's not very difficult. One of the things with the Wise Guys series is that they portray an image that we are mostly interested in covering the criminal mind. The Wise Guys series has been portraying the one percenters. And today we've got a big hitter in the one percent club, and that is the pagans. We'll discuss that and much more about the pagans. I'm excited about the USCCA, especially as the Bolshevik states of woke continue to want to take away our guns. Today, your membership, if you sign up today with the USCCA contains so much more. It has hours and hours of training that they're adding on. Almost on a monthly schedule, it's going to start switching over a new course. You know, training is everything, whether it's academical training or physical training. Well, today the USCCA meets that challenge. And for as little as $5 more, or $9 more in your membership, depending which one you have, whether it's you pay for the whole thing yearly, annually, or monthly. It is worth its weight in gold. If you can get as much training that I see for a minimal amount of $5 a month, then I encourage you to stay with that. But in the meantime, you need to take a hard look at the USCCA, especially in the Bolshevik states of woke that we live today. The lawyers are coming after you. The bad guys are coming after you. You don't only have to be tactically sound. You have to be educated sound, legal sound. You need to have that backup, and the USCCA gives you that. For more information on that, click on the link below, and it will take you to more information, or if you want to become a member, We are an affiliate of the USCA because we strongly believe in its core values. So I encourage you to jump on that. And here's one thing I want to say. If you don't want to be a USCCA member, then join something else, whether it's the NRA, Legal Shield, but just don't. We live in a society that just carrying a gun on you because you got a concealed weapons license, it just isn't enough. You need that training. You need that educational level. You need that legal protection. Without it, you're so vulnerable. So I encourage you to do so. We're going to transmit now to our word of the week because there's one area where we are not vulnerable because we're under the protection and the wings of the Almighty. Today, 
Revelations 7, verse 9 and 10. Make sure your church teaches on salvation and not the riches of the world. Today, so many people, so many churches out there just talk about the riches, being empowered and having money. But we live in a dangerous world that this isn't about money. This is about salvation. This is about your salvation and protection under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ. I encourage you to continue listening to RadarCopNation.com. There's a section on there that says AWOL. Click on that and you can hear all the uh, messages that we have, 30 minutes or less, for your spiritual growth. The Pagans MC, episode 213. And now we have to ask the question, why are the Pagans the way they are? And we're prepared, ready, and willing to answer that today. Episode 213, The Pagans MC. Today we will discuss the most sophisticated and violent club of the Outlaw 1% Motorcycle Clubs. Part of the Wise Guy series. We're diving in on how they work and how their societies are. Founded in 1959 in Prince George County, Maryland, they were actually incorporated in 1959, but they really started early on in 57, 58. Took, I guess, a while to get the expansion going. Their regions are mostly in the east coast of the United States. Currently, the national president is known as Keith Conan Richter, and... Under his leadership, he's expressed that the pagans are to expand and expand all over the eastern coast of the United States. In fact, he's taken it so serious that under the bottom rocker of their colors, he wants the description of East Coast. So they're basically claiming the entire East Coast of the United States. They have, of course, chapters up to 900 members, 44 chapters, but guess what? No clubhouses. See, the pagans are not like your ordinary 1% motorcycle clubs that hang out in a certain clubhouse and in a certain area. They're mostly nomadic. So here today, gone tomorrow. Even... The mother chapter, which is located on Long Island in New York, it fluctuates between Suffolk County and Nassau County, Long Island. They will get up and leave in the drop of a dime. Now, although they have a national president, the national president mostly serves like a CEO. The board of directors is the one that kind of places the agenda forward and that is mostly covered by between 13 and 20 former presidents and they're leading the pagans these individuals wear a patch on their jackets that say 13 and that distinguishes them as a board leader of the group 
The pagans don't meet in clubhouses, as we stated. They don't have any. They fluctuate from place to place. So most meetings are done in members' homes. And this aids them greatly in not being detected so easily by law enforcement. The pagans, uh, has been rumored that they pay their national president $200,000 because they're equaling that of the pay salary of the United States president. Now, as I stated in the opening remarks, the pagans are known for violence, more so than any other big four. I'll explain that in a minute, too. The Justice Department, for over 30 years, has pounded on the desk, and they're talking about the big four and the 1% motorcycle clubs being the Hells Angels, the Outlaws, the, the Bandidos, and the Pagans. But we've changed that number way maybe over a year ago to the big five because the Justice Department, while they sleep under the leadership of Uncle Joe, Sleepy Joe, they forget that the Mongols have gone from West Coast to East Coast, making them an entry into the big five now. The pagans have a relationship with the Mongols as they do with a lot of the other big five groups, with the exception of the Hells Angels, which are bitter enemies. The pagans are profitable in, of course, criminal activity. Prostitution is one of the most profitable ones for the pagans. As we stated, the pagans being one of the big five, are probably, out of all 1% outlaw motorcycle clubs in America, they're the ones that have the biggest ties and relationship to Costa Nostra or the Mafia in America. Pagans have close relationships with the Genovese family, the Gambinos, the Philadelphia Mafia, the New Jersey Mafia, uh, to include the Lucchese family and the Del Cavacantes as well. Now, the, of course, there's some other of the big uh, five that are slowly uh, going into the criminal enterprise organization network and or the syndicate type of mentality, the outlaws, have worked also closely with Costa Nostra as as well as the Hells Angels, very much so affiliated with the Genovese crime family. So the Mafia does not mind having them in, in uh, work and business with them. They've gone on to work on some uh, areas with the Costa Nostra, and a lot of these things deal with extortion, counterfeiting, car theft rings, drug trafficking, and trafficking of arms. This is the bread and butter of the organization. They are very well run for the perception of a lot of citizens. They believe them to just be a bunch of misfits. Also, citizens kind of regard outlaw one percenters like they did back in the 60s. Oh, they're just uh, finding themselves and they'll take showers every other month. They're just lost souls. But they're really a very sophisticated, paramilitary structured organization that runs like clockwork. The uh, pursuant to the United States uh, Department of Justice, they say that the pagans distribute meth and PCP in the northern eastern sector of the United States. They have labs and chemists can be found in places like Connecticut, New York, 
Pennsylvania, Virginia, Maryland, and Ohio. Pagans have a unique signature when it comes to assassinations or taking people out. And that's usually two gunshots to the back of the head. Now, the pagans have been always stereotyped as being uh, pro-white, anti-everybody else, and sort of a white supremacist group. And not to say that it might not exist in certain groups or clubs or chapters, but the pagans, especially under its new leadership, has really made the crossing of ethnic groups, let's just say, a better fit for the business profile. More and more are now Hispanic or Latino, and they are moving up in the ranks. The alleged national vice president is Hugo Zorro Nieves, and he has been summoned and testified in front of grand juries in New Jersey. The pagans also have a chapter in the beautiful commonwealth of Puerto Rico. So the pagans have come a long way from being white supremacists. Now, of course, they still have bylaws that they do not accept people of color or black. And as a result, when they started merging more Latinos and Puerto Ricans into the ranks of the pagans, the darker skinned Hispanics were frowned upon by a lot of the let's say, old-timers in the pagans, so much so that some decided to part ways, believing that their beliefs of old have gone to waste. The pagans are a well-run organization, as I've stated before. They seem to play very well with the other big four groups. As I said, with the exception of the Hells Angels that they've been at war with for a long time. They are battling the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and other regions against the Hells Angels. But for the most part, they work well with the Mongols and the Outlaws and, of course, the Bandidos. Now, there's been a skirmish here or there, but nothing that we can call out an all-out war. Remember, they're one percenters. If you violate a one percent rule, well, there's not really a civil, civil lawsuit to follow. It's usually justice right on the spot, and sometimes those are the things that you might see or, or read about in the newspaper. They're Colors are different from all other groups where they wear denim jackets. But lately there have been a special breed of mongoloid out in the online surfing world where they're buying imitation 1% club colors. And the stupidity doesn't just stop there. These individuals are actually wearing them. Now, I'll, I can also I can only tell you that wearing official colors of a one percent club, Hell's Angels, Outlaws, Pagans, Bandidos, Mongols, and not being an actual member of the group will get you into a world of trouble. And not the time out in the corner type of trouble either. The pagans, of course, will have none of this, and they have, uh, let's say, enforced their copyright rule to the full effect. Whoever they find buying these things or dealing them, they'll find and remember what their trademark is on any type of shootings or assassinations the signature is always a two blasts in the back of the head 
Of course, if you are part of the 1% outlaw world, you would say this is rumored, not necessarily true. There's no evidence. We're stereotyped all the time. But there is evidence, and there's plenty of it in court cases, Department of Justice files, and grand juries, and the list goes on. You don't have criminal organizations that have been around for over 60 years and not have members of the group become criminal. But as I said in other podcasts dealing with the one percenters, it's easy to point and say them over there. It's more difficult to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that as you point at the entire group, that the entire group is actually committing crimes. Rico has not stuck very well against one percenters. From early on when the Rico statue was first used by the Department of Justice in 1979 against Sonny Barger and the Hells Angels, it fell apart against the United States government. You see, the jury said, well, there are criminals in the group, clearly see that, but we don't get the association you're trying to paint, ride a motorcycle, wear a jacket, you're a criminal. And the government today, 2021, still sucking wind trying to prove that point. In the meantime, 1% groups like the pagans exist. They have jobs they are running the mill people just like you and I making ends meet although they live in a part of a secret society and a one percent society still doesn't make them a criminal the government is so infatuated with slapping charges on one percenters as RICO finding two predated acts and trying to point at everybody in one clubhouse and saying, all of you right there, none of you is moved. You're all guilty. It's not working. So I think it'd be behoove the United States government to start going after them as individuals, getting evidence just like you do every other schmuck citizen in America. You probably get a lot better results too. But they're always trying to claw at the top to make their case, and as a result, RICO and these convictions have not done well. Recently, the president of the Pagans was arrested in transit in the Northeast, headed towards New Jersey. He was pulled over, and being a felon, he was found with a firearm on his possession. Well, we'll have none of that outburst, and now he's going through the ringer as a result of that now all of a sudden out of that one case will a RICO case emerge because he was riding around with a firearm in his pocket sometimes the alcohol, tobacco and firearms which usually deal with 1% groups they're not as sophisticated as the FBI when they deal with the Costa Nostra The cases are much more solid against the mafia, but against 1% clubs, it's sloppy, just like the agency that investigates them. They've even been tied at one point or another to firebombing clubhouses of rival 1% clubs. So that and many other things are concerning to a lot of people. As we said, the uh, pagans are moving towards the entire blanket of the East Coast, making more of, of their territory greater as they stretch out. They're currently in a battle with northern New Jersey and areas of New York against the Hells Angels. But as they now are all the way down in Florida and looking around and saying, I like the real estate around this place also. 
in that place and that place over there. Being the most violent, I'm sure that they're going to get much more territory than other clubs really like. But what's fascinating is their peace agreement and their partnership with Mongols and outlaws makes them that much more powerful to even grow worldwide. But right now, their expansion and their orders from their national president, East Coast, and it's on their bottom rocker of their jock jackets, and they're enforcing it full steam ahead. You, we do these uh, podcasts to kind of reflect the 1% lifestyle. Understanding that one percenters, it all starts speaking in the same language. Because if you notice on these interviews, I'm only talking about the group. The individual person doesn't matter because it's the group personality. And in the investigation, it's reversed. They go after the person and they try to make it into the group and it doesn't work. Cultural Nostra, these are individuals that belong to a secret society. And as a result, justice goes after that individual and then kind of ties them into some type of group with maybe one or two people. This outreach of the United States government to saying anyone that rides the motorcycle and wears the colors is a criminal is a far cry. I told you in the beginning of this podcast that... The pagans have 900 members and allegedly 44 chapters in the U.S. Beyond a reasonable doubt, can you say that all 900 are criminals? There stands the problem. And the government has not done a good job in proving that case. Now, as the East Coast region starts to grow, many newcomers to areas in the East Coast, maybe they're coming from uh, California, as far as California, and they're moving to the East Coast, they might run into pagans here and there. Now, be advised, they pagans don't play well with others, so it's always good to just admire from afar and keep going. But at the same time, understand, there's more than one big guy in the neighborhood, in the 1% club, Part of the big five, the pagans, are here to stay for a long time, mostly because their commitment, relationship, and working ability with La Costa Nostra. What's up next? Well, we're going to contact Wonder Woman again, and we're going to do our show that's coming up on overtime and off-duty. But before we get to that, remember, most importantly, we now unload every Sunday night and every Wednesday. We've gone from one episode a week to three a week to now our permanent status, two a week. As always, it is my honor and pleasure to be your host on Radio Cop Nation. Continue to pray for yourself because without you in the game, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. Most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike and I'm out.